this video segment, we're going to be showing you how to use the iDesigner light to create rhinestone patterns. The first step to making rhinestone patterns is to create a new toolbar. The reason for making a new toolbar is that it will give us quick access to the tools needed for creating rhinestone pattern designs. To create the toolbar, we click on the View pull-down menu and then Customize. We're starting a new toolbar, so we will click on the New button. Here we can name the new toolbar Rhinestone and then click OK. It's this next window where the tools can be added to the Rhinestone toolbar. This is done by clicking on the tools we want to add from the list on the left hand side and then clicking Add. The tools that we're looking for are Fit to Shape, Clip Art Viewer, Select All, Clear, and finally cut. Once the tools are added to our new toolbar, we can place them in order of use. This is done by clicking on the tool and then using the Move Up and Move Down button to position each tool. The order we want is Select All First, Clip Art Viewer Second, Fit to Path Third, Clear Fourth, and Cut Last. Once they are in order, we can click on Close. The Rhinestone Toolbar now displays in the iDesigner Light window. Next, we will open a file with the word Angel created in a single stroke font. Now, when letters are a part of your design and you therefore need to select a font, you want to use single stroke fonts for Rhinestone. Any fonts other than single stroke fonts will create a pattern that will appear too convoluted. To create a rhinestone pattern from this design, we need to select all the letters. Next is to select a rhinestone piece from the clip art by clicking on the clip art viewer button found on the rhinestone toolbar. When in the clip art viewer, by clicking on this down arrow button, it opens up a list of clip art categories, one of them being Graphtech rhinestones, which we will open up by double clicking on it. As you can see, there are different sizes available. We can then click on the size rhinestone that we need. And then click OK. The rhinestone shape can be placed anywhere on the drawing. Next is to select both the letters and the single rhinestone shape. This is done by clicking on the Select All button found on our Rhinestone toolbar. Next we click on the Fit to Path button. This will open the Fit to Path window. It is here that we can set the spacing between each rhinestone. Getting the distance right between the rhinestones will take some trial and error. In this case, we'll use .3 inches and click OK. This will take the rhinestone shape and place copies along the path of our angel and space them out to 0.3 inches as we specified. And here we have our rhinestone pattern. Next, zoom in close to the pattern and select the original lines and then delete them by pressing the delete key on your computer keyboard. We'll zoom out again and select the original rhinestone shape and delete it as well. Keep in mind that there may be a couple of rhinestone shapes overlapping or misplaced. Therefore, look over the pattern once it's complete. Remove any rhinestone shapes that are out of place. One warning about rhinestone patterns. Never resize them once they are created. This will distort the holes, making it difficult to place the rhinestones. Now it's just a matter of loading the rhinestone template material into your silhouette and clicking our cut tool. Here we have our rhinestone pattern. Make sure it fits within the cut preview window. Once this is done, click the cut tool and the cutter controller appears. Select a media that is suitable for cutting the rhinestone stencil. Change the cap if need be and then click cut 
After it has completed cutting, unload the rhinestone template media. Peel the backing off the template material, leaving the circle cutouts behind. It usually works best to peel the material off in one quick motion, but be careful with this. In some patterns, circles are placed very closely together and therefore it is better to peel the material slowly to reduce the risk of ripping the pattern. Affix the template material to a rhinestone backing board. Depending on the pattern, this is best done by placing the template face down on the table with the adhesive side facing up. Next, take the rhinestone backing board and prior to placing it on the template, make a slight bend in the middle of the board and lower it onto the template, attaching the middle first and then smoothing the board down towards both ends. This will reduce the potential for wrinkling. Turn the template face up. You may discover that some of the holes have not opened. To correct this, use your X-Acto knife or the Silhouette hook tool to remove any remaining unopened holes. Once all of the holes are removed, place the board along with the template in a box that is larger than the template itself. If you purchase the Silhouette Rhinestone Start Kit, use the plastic container. Freely pour the rhinestones onto the template. Gently shake to place as many rhinestones as possible into the pattern of holes. And then use the brush to fill the empty remaining holes. Remove the excess rhinestones by gently brushing them to the side and then off the template. Once all of the rhinestones are positioned face up in the template, separate the clear transfer sheet from its white backing. Take the transfer sheet and cover the design, and once again place the middle of the transfer sheet so that it attaches first, then smooth the transfer tape enough to ensure all the rhinestones are attached to the transfer sheet. At this point, turn on the iron and adjust the heat setting for wool. Next, carefully lift the transfer tape with the attached rhinestones and position the design on the desired surface. Place the Teflon sheet or cloth over the design. As a tip, you can possibly take part of the garment and use it as the cover cloth. Here we have flipped up the bottom half of the shirt. Place the heated iron on top for 45 to 60 seconds. If the design is larger than the iron, as in this case, heat the pattern in sections. Once the whole pattern has had heat applied for the allotted time, remove the iron and the cover cloth. Starting from the corner, remove the transfer tape slowly. If you find the rhinestones are continuing to stick to the transfer tape, replace the cloth and reapply the iron again, this time with a slightly increased temperature for 45 to 60 seconds. Once the transfer tape is removed, turn the garment inside out and reapply the iron on the design, again for 45 to 60 seconds. The cover cloth or sheet does not have to be used for this. And here is the final result. For more dazzling effects, why not use iron-on materials in combination with your rhinestone patterns? As a final note, when washing or drying the garment, always turn it inside out prior to the wash and dry cycle. It is preferable to hand wash using a mild detergent. Finally, use extreme caution when operating a hot iron. Thank you for watching. For more information, please contact us today.